flamethrower at least has some use. And, and as a guy with overly expensive Porsche branded shoes. Yep. I don't even miss have a that, Porsche. Miss that, miss that sale the shoes too. Shoes are good use for a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't putting them together, but okay. Are, are we organized now? Yeah, I'm waiting for you. Waiting on you. Wait, 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 Jeff, never ask us that question. <laughs> as, you, as you literally do the angry bar fight sweep of stuff off your kid's desk. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> <laughs> or the cat on the counter take everything that's on there oh yeah yeah I, I, f, that, f that thing yeah. f that thing right here <laughs> definitely f that thing <laughs> see wired troll on tiktok welcome to everyone racers a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture it doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run scca or nasa we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself join us each week for tech discussion tips tricks News and notes of the world of amateur endurance racing and whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or lucky enough and Chrissy gives us just the tip, we're sure you're going to giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Thank you for, thanks for coming back and listening to another Delahaye episode. I did not need the phonetics pronunciation of that. Delahaye episode of our pronunciation, the 1939 really? Delahaye Type 165. Normally, right, Scrappy Art of Fuji's there. We thought you'd go <laughs> Delahaye. No, I know what <laughs> Delahaye is. Hey. Uh, <laughs> om- Della almost hey. unanimous. Sounds like someone in Oklahoma. Hey, Della. Della, hey. De- Della, hey. That's Donna uh, saying that. Come on, let's The 1937 Delahaye Type 165 is almost unanimously considered the most beautiful French car of the 1930s. Uh, for those who have never seen a boat tail core, uh, and arguably one of the most beautiful cars ever made, a link is in our show notes. It's episode number 165. If you're not driving a car, don't forget the E1R bingo card. Lots of discussion about the bingo card last week and some uh, listener feedback as a uh, foreshadowing. What you working on? Mental. I have been judging people. And we'll talk more about that later. Uh, actually, aside from that, I was traveling to and from. Uh, I had a uh, a Google meeting video interview yesterday for oh. a part time writing gig, which uh, I don't want to get into it. It's a uh, the challenge they have is they wanted someone full time, which if it paid a lot more, would probably be awesome. But it still might work out. I still might be able to be one of their contributors. That uh, once he gets his staff built, he's going to call back. It's a site you've probably never visited but it's being filled right now with writers that you probably know including the new editor it's getting ready to completely rebrand itself i think it's going to be very successful and regardless if i'm i'm one of their contributors or not you're going to hear about it when it gets the relaunch i think it's going to be a great site cool great oh i knocked my camera (laughs) sorry i'm rearranging my cords You're going to leave it. You're totally all going to leave it. So the YouTube people are like in the doodly doo going back to the the forehead of radio. Oh, we would have, we would have made little, little, little jabs all, all through there. You know, I was headed that way. Oh, that's. Oh, headed. Exactly. Yes. (laughs) Are you going to toss it to somebody or are we just going to go? Oh, I'm sorry. What are you working on? Yeah. Um, we took some scrap metal to the scrap place. That's always fun. And did you see the Fujis uh, while you were there? I didn't. The no, I didn't see the Fujis. I know. Scrappy. Um, and that was, but it was nice. It was like a year's worth of scrap. So it was nice to get rid of that, even though we got a grand and the total. total- oh, oh, hold on, hold on. We're going to talk about that in listener feedback. Oh, sorry. Save oh, okay, it. Okay. We got, we got some dollars. Uh, it was a, a two digit figure of dollars. So that's, good but hey mostly i just care about recycling it and plus it's always fun it's like wait i was going to throw this away this is trash but you're going to give me money for it that's that's always nice so we've anyway. discussed this before and i always constantly am, am balancing the pocket change the lunch for two that i would get once a year if i took my scrap to or just leaving it out for the scrap guy because i kind of like like the you know the 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 shark circling my house like dude 
that Wakeman guy, dude. I saw him get a big <laughs> job. We, we, we have this guy. That dude never cuts rotors, man. He always leaves them for me. I have, we have that guy, and I give what, stuff what to him. Uh, too, but. Yeah. When I was doing construction, we would actually have our laborers uh, pile the recyclable metal into a pile. We had this old, uh, he was an old vet. He'd come by, uh, prosthetic leg, and he had money. This was just like the thing that got him out of the house and moving around. And, you know, he, he said, you know, it was his drinking money or whatever. And he had this old uh, beat up van. Yeah. And it was, uh, yeah. So we didn't recycle anything. In fact, we would tell him where our next job was. Hey, all right. The, the new construction site's going to be over here and he'd come see us a couple of weeks without fail. Anyway, I uh, also did some leaf raking and, uh, Got the cross member on the Z finish. We made a new tubular cross member up front that holds the radiator up, separates the frame rails, and also uh, is a attachment point for some of the front suspension. So the previous one was all jacked up. Great gold. From uh, the Crump rednecks gold. who we bought the car from. Uh, and it was in the way of moving the radiator forward, the amount we need to move it to fit that stupid engine. And so made a new one. Um, pretty pleased at uh, how strong it is it's not the prettiest thing but it'll it, it's gonna work which is what i really like about this stuff uh now i'm in z wiring hell not the ls part of the swap that's not hard it's the z that's the problem among oh. other things what do you got to do because well it was a complicated car all the stuff it was a complicated car in 1992 um, and the way that because the engine did not fit in the engine bay, they put a bunch of stuff outside the engine. Bay. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. For example, all of the highest amperage wires for everything in the car run outside the engine bay behind the fender. Yeah. It's so t- if it's you were to get tucked, it's a factory get hit, tuck job. But if you were to get hit in the fender, those wires that carry all the battery voltage are going to get hit. Yeah. I don't really like that. And there's also a whole bunch of wires that run right along the radiator support, which we have cut most of that away. Um, so I'm trying to move things around and take wires out and wi- route them in a safer way. And also free up some spots on the harness in the Z to, to run the LS stuff and to run over things. So it's terrible though, frankly. And, and <laughs> the reason that we threw out the motor was because of the wiring harness. Let's be honest. Yeah, the motor wiring and the wires that are outside was the so engine terrible. bay are okay. Yeah, right. Any engine, any wiring that was in the engine bay is crispy. You just take it and bend it, and it just crackle, crackle, crackle. The stuff in the fenders was actually all right, but yeah, terrible. I don't like this job. Um, Chrissy, <laughs> are you helping with this job? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was my way of throwing it to you to say what Thanks. you're working on yeah what he said well i did the scrap metal and i did the leaf raking but uh when there's the z has to get worked on i say oh, do you want would you like me to bake you a pie uh, how would i do your laundry i, I didn't did, get a pie I would like all a of a pie. sudden chrissy be becomes like a girl Susie like homemaker. all of a sudden right? all the i would like to make oh, you some oh, oh, no 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 all no no that is nothing to do with yard. That has nothing to do with her gender. It has everything to do with her defined culinary skill. Thank you. Uh, I will make you a pie so I don't have to work on the Z, especially <laughs> the wiring, uh, especially in the cold, even if the garage is on. So I've been, fi- well, th- this week I've had extracurriculars, so I have had good excuses to not work on the garage. Uh, but we are, we do have jobs and I will eventually get there. So we did some relaxing a little bit too. So that was nice. Uh, let's move on to Jeff. What'd you do? Uh, so Hi, everything Jeff. I what did, did you do? everything I did was on the wife's uh, list. So she's been, you, you, I, we've already mentioned the 2015 Subaru Forester and it clicked. So I replaced the axle on the lower uh, control arm and a few other things. Uh, what I didn't replace was the um, sway bar links. And I definitely gnarled the hell out of them, getting them undone. And I was like, ah, that'll be fine. So uh, a week later, she's like, it still clicks and you're in trouble. (laughs) So I re-cranked, tightened the sway bar links. And now I'm a genius again for fixing the car. But so, yeah, nut and bolt, check everything or suffer the consequences of an angry wife. Uh, because not only did I say, oh, don't worry, I'll fix the Subaru today. Go ahead and take your Corvette 
to the uh, to the wine store to get wine for the friend who was having a birthday. She calls me like three blocks later and is like, the car is freaking out. I'm coming back. This is terrible. The car is horrible. The car is horrible. I'm like, ah, the car's going to die. car's going to blow up. I'm not going to live. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, every light is on. ABS brake stability control. The radio doesn't work. The windows aren't working. I was like, oh my God, it's having like a GM meltdown. Did you park it near a Volkswagen? I did not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me say the, something. The check engine wasn't on, so that it was no, no. I, first plug-in. thing I did was plug in the the the. the that was my first idea before you had said that. And there's no faults. I cleared. There's nothing there. I'm like, I don't know what the hell this is. Um. Uh, so I took the battery, charged the battery. I got the, the battery. By the way, was giving plenty of volts. Uh, twelve six when it was off or 14, whatever, when it was on, uh, I was like, eh, it's not the battery, but I'm going to charge it anyway. And I charged it and it seemed to get a little better. And then I drove it hard and it seemed like everything seemed to work. And then like the lights, the lights are definitely going freaky. Like this was not like a poltergeist situation. Like I was driving it. It was like flashing in my face and everything. Um, so I can, so I looked online and it said, uh, oh, oh, so we f- I fixed some of it with the recharge. Oh, take the battery out and let it reset. So that's what I did. I took the battery out, charged it out of the car. So the computer reset and like 90% of it worked except the right directional signal. You push the stick and the tail lights would flash. The headlights would, you know, the headlight indicator, the side, everything would flash where it belongs. Nothing on the dashboard would show that the what, that the right indicator was working. Uh, if you put on the left indicator, it would work. If you put on the hazards, neither of them would show up, but all the lights in the external part of the car would work. F- fuck you, GM. Let's start right there, you wonky. <laughs> wow. Okay. Damn. How do you when really did your that? when did your car become an 84 grand dam? Wow. I, I know, exactly. Um yeah. So I uh, was working on the car. It was a little windy. And because I said, fuck you, GM and fuck you, Corvette, that the the, uh, the hood fell on my head. <laughs> it is a reverse like opening hood. And it literally went slam me right in the back of the head. Like, I like you cut G whack. Um, so, yeah, this is this terrible. Uh, my son, they, it, since it fixed, I told my wife to go back out again. And my son got in the car because they were going to get pick up food or something. And he's like, oh, the passenger floor is all wet. Ding, ding, ding. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So the Corvette GM computers are all in the passenger footwell. And if you're not careful, the drain will plug and it will make everything really wet. So... I cleared the drain. I dried the floor. Everything works fine. I guess GM, I'll allow you to continue to build me a 400 horsepower sports car. <laughs> yep. That was it. I did flooring, but that's not fun. Oh, and contact tracing. I am. I, I. I was again cleared by the contact tracer for my students who got sick, but this time the contact tracer, who's a friend of mine, said. So, Jeff, it's really a coin flip. Which way would you like it to go? Would you like to stay home <laughs> for two weeks? Depends on if yeah. you paid, paid or not. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm also taking the contact tracing. So next time one of my students gets sick, I can contact myself. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, Jeff, you feeling I, sick? I actually oh, contact, my, yes. contact myself on an alarmingly often basis. Yeah. But, you know, it's just a personal thing. That, that was it. I, I the, the big thing was the Corvette. That was the frustrating part of the week sounds like it <sighs> news and notes <laughs> i thought you were gonna say something more fun okay great <laughs> i was like here's the wind up okay we're gonna, we're gonna do news and notes news uh and so in in 2000 uh, august of 2019 i can't believe it was that long ago uh a woman in motorsports an icon jesse combs passed doing something which she loved uh going fast but was also known for her welding and fab skills uh the guinness world records posthumously uh, awarded her the um fastest woman uh the world's fastest woman she clocked an average of 522.783 miles per hour and completed two-way runs before her death 
So a scholarship uh, program was created in honor to help the next generation of trailblazing and stereotype breaking women, which I just love. Uh, a total of seven women will be receiving money this year to pursue careers in welding, fabrication, auto mechanical, and electric mechanical, electrical work, metal fab, pipe fitting, and mechanical engineering. Uh, it's an annual program, so they're going to be letting uh, women excel in areas that women aren't typically found. So good on them. Excited to have that uh, link in the show notes. And there's, but when you read, there's no link on how to donate. That's okay. Okay. I think there's one on that website. Okay. Do you think you should look for a little further? Do you want to do this? Sure. Uh, so this past week, W Series said they will be partners with Formula One. Uh, we get on the soapbox when W Series started because we don't like singling women out, but apparently it's turned into a valid platform for the women to start to play on an equal footing with the boys. So the partnership means that W Series will run with eight F1 support races. So admittedly, the articles we have didn't say what partnering really means, but uh, a little, hey, it's heading in the right direction. It's more publicity. It's more views. That's, that's a good start. Should we mention what the W Series is? Do people even know what that is? It's a women's race series, women's only race series that was. Uh, oh, you're going to mansplain this? Jeff? No, I'm not going to mansplain like it because what you should. Okay, Chrissy can do it. It's it's fine. Are, you you read it. No, this is good. He's already on a roll. Go ahead. A story. All right. <laughs> I don't even know what they drive. They're like Formula 2000s, right? Uh, I don't know the spec compared to what the F1 is. I don't know that. They are open wheel F1 looking cars, is what they are. But I don't think they're on like television. No. I don't think. I mean, no, and they, they um, weren't running support with F1 until obviously recently. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's a not till next year, that's 2021, obviously. Um, so that's fine. It's nice. There's some fun women that drive in it, and it's good for women. But whatever. I just. Oh, and it, yeah. uh, I think there's some, there's some female team owners too, which is nice. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. And a lot there are obviously more women mm -hmm. all around, which is nice. But still, we're getting closer. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So, opposite lock is dead. The infamous oppo. Citing copyright infringement and changing regulations, Gawker Media had to say goodbye to the Kenja user's blog in order to avoid liability. So as of this past Monday, the 16th, uh, you cannot edit or post. Now a linked article does promise that the site is gonna stay up till the end of November and is gonna be an Atom feed of ATOM software that is going to let the Oppo export existing content to another platform. Now Jalopnik editor Rory Carroll says, our tech people have tested it and they say it works well. Carroll also added that, I hope you'll be able to keep the community intact through this migration and I'm happy to do whatever I can to support that. If you're currently an Oppo moderator, please email me. I'd have something I'd like your help with, but the article, and it also has some really nice contacts from some of the Oppo contributors, but it was a very user dynamic organization and it's a shame that it's going away. And I think we need a little bit more of these communities. Uh, going with that. No, it's not a phone thing, Jeff. It has nothing to do with phone. It has to do with that they can't have the software that they were using. Oh, and no, I was telling a, you to look at your text messages. Oh, never mind. Sorry. My phone's not here. Yeah. Oh, right. we, we think your microphone might be on the laptop. Yeah. Ah, uh, two uh, mockery. Got it. All right. Yep. Oh, oh, the two mockery is far from crazy. I was trying to be cool about it. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I do. And I'm just going to own it myself. Uh, I don't know what Oppo it is. It is. It is 100%. Um, Oppo Lock was a, uh, Oppo Lock was a. Oh, was that's a, better. Yeah. It was yeah. a, it was a user community. For anybody? Just a car blog type? Yeah, it was, car, it was on car. Gawker. So Gawker kind of hosted a car, like, like message board system. Is it like, like GRM? Oh, yeah, now we got nothing. Is, yeah, we got nothing. I said nowhere near as cool, like nowhere okay. near level. It was, it was a lot of flat built nice guys saying, over. My car is got great. It. That, that okay. story was stupid. I've got plans for my car. Nope, nope. still got nothing. Nope. nothing. Uh, okay, great. Oppo is dead. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Oppo. Fans. I just want to know does Gawker really know anything about liability in the media? <laughs> That's a joke. Oh. Uh, <laughs> nope, still not working. Dude. Ask Hulk Hogan. <laughs> now, now I think mental is nope. just like punking us he's moving his <laughs> lips he's mad 
Or he's just fake go back that. to the mic. Just go okay. back to the mic. Come microphone. back to the left. Oh, now we got it. Oh, there we go. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we got oh, it. Much better. better. Much uh, better. But it was, it was, it was very much, it was very similar to Jalopnik, but rather than having the contributors, anybody could throw a car review up there and then it, it, it kind of forced the more popular ones to the top. It was, it was very interactive. The way Truth About Cars used to be a long time ago. Yeah. And, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of flat bill, you know, I know you better than you, but there was also some really good content. And one of the things in the, the Jalopnik article, which we'll link to is despite this, you know, I'm smart, you're dumb mentality. It was actually a very accepting community. There was a, a lovely transgender article said, you know, this is where I came out. And then I still got to stay with my cars and, and, you know, yeah, I got the standard, but by and large, the community was, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, your transgender lists here about your opinion on cars. That's what matters here. So. Yeah, There's it was some definitely good stuff there. like Reddit, like a little bit more self-monitored, like the community yeah. kind of monitored itself. Uh, here's a question for you, Home Slice. Do you know what Flagger <laughs> is? On a 7-15-21, so next season, AER will mandate Flagger units be present in all cars racing with them. Uh, they'll have a few units to rent, but they strongly urge you to take advantage of this new offer that they just put out uh Back basically now. flagger Operators is a are standing by it, it's a little box that you put in your car uh it's about 250 bucks and it's got a subscription service and when they push a button if it's a yellow flag it blinks yellow at you if it's a red flag it blinks red at you and if it's a black flag i don't know what it does um because how do you blink black I, i'm not sure I don't know. I didn't read the whole article. I pressed the play on a video, but it didn't show much. Uh, so, yeah. So they are going to do the electronic flagging thing. And it's like I said, uh, 250 bucks is the regular price. But if you go to AER and buy it now, you get your subscription for free. I could not find out what a subscription cost. I did. I saw the video. It looked kind of cool, but uh yeah flagger and in case you missed it champ car doing the same thing with a different box they're doing flagtronics similar product uh recommended for 6121 mandatory 1122 so it's about a year behind aer uh seems like flagtronics same thing but it's 150 bucks and no subscription Mm, one of them is gonna win up win out. Yeah, it's like which the, one's beta the which one's the beta max versus V. Right. Yeah. Well, which one is that gets the porn? That's there, the, well, that's and there's the a gonna win. There's a third option that we used at <laughs> Thunderhill, and it was a, a phone app, so you could have it on your phone. The problem is, is if your phone, like, if it nothing happened for a while, your phone would go into like, screen lock, and then yeah, yeah. you're taking your, you know, and you're Looking still. Your, oh, so you Jeff to, is really good at texting while driving. Unlocking. And you Unlocking. had to, uh, right. And the other thing, but that also allowed you the option of having one in your pit, so you could radio and say when there was a flag. It's it's the way it's going to go because nighttime you're having some issues seeing some of these flags unless they've adopted some of these new systems or like in New Hampshire where they've got the lighted stuff. I was, I was judging the lemons race. I gave Dale a ride to the airport and then Dale and I sat around for an hour and had a great you know cup of coffee. And he was telling me the whole thing and we're, we're going to lose something there. There is an entire means of communication and I linked it in our show notes and I called it. If you want to know if Dale and Ken are talking about you and it gives you the entire language. If you see Dale and Ken and they're looking like they're trying to tell somebody to steal first, they are having an entire discussion about a car. And they can actually do it faster than you can make a radio call. And, and we're going to lose that kind of an art. And in that situation where if you're the one in a broken car or you're in a dangerous spot, you, you're, and you're relying on that flagger system, but there's not someone in that actual tower that's calling and saying, this car is upside down. I need at least two uh, tilt tow trucks out here to get this guy flipped over. We're going to need an ambulance and that sort of thing. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to lose that. And we're not going to realize it until it's too late. And Chrissy? I was just thinking about the phone app and how not only does the screen close, but I'm thinking you are at Thunder Hill, which we've never been to, so I don't know how it is, but uh, in like Button Willow, uh, you're in the middle of freaking nowhere. So a phone, any kind of phone thing, you know, sometimes you don't even get, actually CMP, I think you can't necessarily get um, um, race monitor all the time, you know, so sometimes it's it's skipping. So you've, if you've got a phone based thing, if this is a, a it, like it an analog thing. Thing. It had its own network, so you had to log on to that network, and you could only use it for the phone app. But yes, you're you're okay. correct. It's just one of those but, things that I think if it, if it's an analog thing, if somebody's pushing a button that says 
lane, uh, you know, and in corner one needs to be yellow. And also I'm thinking while you're talking about this, it's, it's, are you, are you thinking more about if the flagger is waving fast or normal, like you have a yellow because you're going to come up, up and over a hill. Yeah. Is that no, yellow you're, you're, a yellow right. or is that yeah, yellow yeah. A, a, a waving yellow? The more they're waving That's at different. you, the, the more dangerous it is in front of you. Yeah. And you can you, see the whites a... of their eyes. Yeah, if if they're just kind of casually, then somebody spun out. But if they're like, "Oh dear God, please see this," then something is blocking your. That that is absolutely something I had not considered. And so, by removing the human element, we we we're 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 gonna we're gonna miss something, and it's a shame because I did not realize. I knew that flagging was more involved than we thought it was. I didn't realize what an art form it was until I sat and talked to Dale for an hour. And it's <clears throat> we're gonna lose it. It's a shame. Uh, it might not because they're probably going to have to do both. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's no way to remove the flagger because the flagger has to actually sit at the station and push the button, according to the little video that I watched. The doodly. -doo. I would think. I would think so. You yeah. would have to see what you want to see. What's good. like the flagger is there to watch what's the, happening in the next corner. So they're going to yeah. even if somebody can see overhead, they're going to still want to be able to have that view of did they go off and then come back on. Yeah. So they're going to still have a flag like in their hand. They're still going to wave it. Uh, one. I'll, just, I'll say one last engine nerding thing. Uh, the links will be in the show notes to both systems, but one of them was a mesh network. And one of them was cell phone based. So the mesh network, basically they network off each other like a bunny beehive thing. Uh, so, uh, nerds, go read it. Tell us which is cooler. <laughs> well, that seems like the, if it's not cell phone based, it may help in places that don't have self, good cell uh, service, especially to link 120 cars or stuff. So. Anyway, exactly. Up upcoming. Races. races okay this weekend is at yara which we were just talking about and they're finally wrapping up their 2020 season at ngmp thunderbolt they'll have friday qualifying thunderbolt. night uh, thunderbolt and thunderbolt night, and night practice Ooh. for no reason just, read and the then, whole oh, copy single 14 hour race on saturday 51 cars 26 of them are bmws boring, boring. Um, that's but, more than half it is more than half. Get creative, people. Seriously. <laughs> what? What? Okay, here's creativity. One's listed as an E30 pickup. Well, good for what? them. Okay, All we'll right. see how that goes. Seven Miatas, one Can Honda. Seven, they took the seven, trunk lid where off. They cut off the back. They're friends with Sasha. And one of those are a 1980 911. Ooh. Finally, a 2020 Supra, which should count as a BMW. <laughs> and our buddies, totally. Trevor and Tyler, would be their SJS Motorsports. Uh, good luck with them. So 14 hours on a single day. That's going to it's going to be a lot of dark hours cuz in, will in New Jersey dark. here we're only getting about getting about 8. So I'm sure they're not starting that early. Yeah. Cool. Is this it's, my color? I can't a, even tell. It is. It well, cuz oh. you made it super dark green. That's like Oh, I didn't make this green. Somebody know, else did. That's that's, that's fine. Forest green. You need yeah. to be more British like, racing is that, green. Is that black? Lucky Dog is also wrapping up their 2020 season with the 1000 miles of Thunder Hill Championship. Uh Steve Summer Memorial Race on the 5 mile configuration. Wow, 5 mile configuration of Thunder Hill Raceway Park. I've See, never been to Thunder I've never been to Thunder Hill, but yes, I know about the Thunder Sleep. No entry list is available on recording time, but we wish them luck. Lucky Dogs 2021 schedule is out, and it definitely should check it out. There are two East Coast racers. Count them. Two East Coast racing events. And just added the Saber Dog GP at the Indy Motorsports Ranch, Wilcox, Arizona, March 27th and 28th. Okay. Recent race results, repping H-Town. Metzl took a slab down to West Texas for the, um, actually really it wasn't West Texas, it's South Texas, for the Oklahoma, Yokohama Stunton Sploden Soiree at MSR. First overall was Ginger Race Team and their big Still BMW. Still boring. Very cheap. much so, yep. Nine laps back was Radiator Springs Racing and their Tomator Miata. And third overall, first in B was Lap Dogs and one of the last manual Maximas left in the world. C was number 401, the low ball racing gremlin, who, as promised, brought a case of claws for mental at check in. Yep. And he's drinking them now by the looks of it. And then Team Breaking Bad <laughs> brought two more to BS inspection. We were clawing all weekend. It was awesome. Man, no laws in the penalty box this weekend, that's for sure. 
I got screwed was number 120, pure black racing. Uh, 200, 2000, uh, what, what year Audi 2000, S4? Is that? Sorry, yeah, 2000. Sorry, 2000 Audi S4, which everyone will say, that is not a $500 car. You are so cheaty, but uh, never, no one else cares because they know it's not going to work. So yeah, here, blew the head gasket. Uh, driver and family rescheduled their flight. Team swore they could fix it, so they switched them back. Oh, wah, wah. <laughs> big, big surprise. Now. Didn't yeah, get it exactly. fixed. Uh, her fix was that damn bitch Carol Baskins. <laughs> We're not going to spoil the story. Watch the wrap-up video, but apparently it was a true ordeal involving two different cars, tow vehicle issues, and a frozen credit card. Excellent. They say frozen credit card like that's something that doesn't happen like regularly. Like doesn't everybody like, have? You got to have at least two, just cause. Like yeah, like like the the second time in ten minutes, you're running that credit card for three hundred dollars <laughs> worth of fuel on the mass turnpike. It's like, no, nah, yeah. there's a problem here, yo. <laughs> there, no one spends four hundred dollars in one weekend at twenty five dollar increments at O'Reilly's. No one. Yeah. Uh, Judge's choice was number fifty five, a Pontiac G six. Hopefully it was like a G6. It bought from a res- recreational pharmaceutical user. Oh, Org like a choice. G6. Right, exactly. Uh, Org Choice was number 63, Nader Haters Subaru Powered Corvair. Look for Lemons World on that. That's a I- great was- spelling of the team name, by the way. N-A-D-R-H-8-T-R-S. Nader Haters. Thank you. So you can pronounce that, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I, one was, goat though. Just, I, one, just goat. one goat. <laughs> one goat. It's not I one goat. Was, it's a lot of goats. racing. A two-person team in a Volvo 242 GT. This car is apparently fantastic. Yeah, it, it looks. Oh, it looks very lemony. I'll put it that way. Well I don't done. think two people qualifies as squad. By the way, I'm just saying. <laughs> what is the official minimum number for a squad? I think it's three you, plus. You work at a college. Squad. You, you, you watch like, TikTok. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> squad goals, yo. Listener feedback time. Last week's discussion of potential Honda race cars in the YouTube doodly do, James Mulhorn said that he thinks the Honda Fit might be a good race car. And he's right. Uh, they run them in grid life. In fact, they had a, for a while, it was the Fit Cup. It was just an unofficial little unmodified Fit series. And it's you can do case pounds. swaps of them if you really yes, want to. case yeah. swaps all over. In fact, there's a team running AR that's got one, and it's, it's center steely quick. They are 2,100 pounds in the factory, 115 horsepower, easy to find in a manual i don't know how easy but it's possible consumables will be cheap too and he and he put it on the list of contenders now i want to add that this weekend we saw one from these dirty rotten cheaty national effing champion stealing ginger race team and this thing was so obviously a retired b-spec racer and sajeev and i just went after it however the car was quick it did not use up a lot of fuel. It didn't go through its tires. We didn't see it in the penalty box. They are good race cars if you can get one. Yeah, they were hot in B-Spec for a little while until I they think were. the second generation of minis and the Mazda 3s showed up. And I think I think anything with the forced induction started pulling them. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, well, the Ma- I think the Mazda 3, whatever the other, what's the Ford version? whatever i think Fiesta, they seem yeah. to be the hot ticket at the moment they because they did not have the forced induction i think they gave them like no weight penalty at all anyway mm. i'm not into b-spec i just follow their facebook so i can buy parts fellow podcaster and listener number two bill fisher he loves texting us so damn early on Thursday morning that I typically read it through like half squinty eyes while I'm taking my morning. And I would like to point out that while Jeff, who gets up early in the morning, is reading it on the toilet, I am three hours away from waking up, <laughs> Bill. It's not bad when he just does one. <laughs> Well, the problem is, is I reply, and so Robert right? wakes, and then he replies. My anyway. dogs start barking. Turn, uh, anyway, I'm not going to say anything. This week he texted, <laughs> and he also disagrees that there is only one free space on our bingo board. He says, mental tells a story that goes nowhere, sarcasm, and someone makes fun of someone are all free spaces. Well, Bill, I love your podcast, and I remember that time when you had that guest that knew way more than you did, and but you didn't introduce them, so nobody knew who they were. Then Alan's microphone stopped working. That was great. Now all the free spaces are taken, okay? <laughs> I like that. 
That was good. Okay. I posted a pic. We already started talking about this pic of our truckload of scrap and asked for estimates on how much medley junk we could give away. There were lots of good guesses, uh, but by prices of price is right rules. Al Jones wins with $33 because apparently he recently took a same sized heap uh, to the scrap yard. We end up making just over $34, which is a surprise to us. Uh, there were many touting extra low costs of scrap recently. So they were amazing that we got that much so were we thanks for chiming in enough for, enough for a good lunch a nice lunch yeah we yep. bought some beer instead i was gonna say yeah, we spent, that's we lunch spent, spent more than that at the beer store afterwards oh well yeah, exactly All we right, had an so, e1r uh, race we had an e1r race camaro street socks at the charlotte oval now we ran a baseline i racing setup with no changes allowed that uh uncle dave set up for us or did yeah, we just he, use the uncle dave line? said this is what we should use and yes. we right. we let him be the <laughs> The, the um, judge, the arbiter, the, yeah. the arbiter, because he knows like when to call a yellow and what what a lucky dog lap is, exactly and what all that crap is. And we went, what? And, I'm just going to go that way and turn left. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> the the I think it was a great result. I think Chris, you agree. Uh, we had a good yeah. time. We stayed bunched up for almost several times, almost two whole laps, and then we would have this great big huge crash. Now, despite the alien Santiago and Tyler coaching us and some great team efforts, and we were trying to draft and catch up to Jay Baker, we were just absolutely unable to catch him until it came down to the last couple of laps, and uh, Tom Lamino, during a yellow flag, simply rolled up next to him and knocked him off the track <laughs> completely. <laughs> I had not very last lap of the so second hard. race. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the most casual just do, do, right do, next to him. Bam. <laughs> yeah, but then he just kept driving all the way to the infield wall, he like did. against he the grass, on the grass. Exactly. All made him, made him pit. Over. Probably got a speeding penalty. Yeah. So regardless of who crossed the line first, Tom Lamito won that race. And I'm adamant about that. Totally. Um, so this, the, this Monday, we're going to be doing open wheel at Summit Point. And if you are preparing to run Sonoma or Road Atlanta, we've got those races coming up as well. Get a hold of us on our social media, text us, however you want to do it. We'll give you the password. We'll give you the Discord link. Love to have you. You'll get some training in, but if you're really, really good, we're going to crash into you. No, I was going to say, it usually. doesn't matter whether you're good or not. You're going to get crashed yeah. into. Yeah, not on purpose. This is fun. But we we do laugh quite a lot when we do. We this, do, though. You know who yeah. never crashes on purpose? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> We're waiting. Who mental? Oh, who? Uh, I, I'm it's waiting Chrissy's, with bated breath. It's Chrissy's mom. Nice. <laughs> and actually, most of the family. I don't think Jen crashes on purpose, but. <laughs> <laughs> Jen hasn't crashed in a long time, so she's. Oh, so you have to say actually hi to these people. Now. Yes, right. That I doesn't do. Hello. count. Hello, Chrissy's mom, dad, Jen. Uh, all those people. All yeah, the whole, the whole, the, the whole, whole crew. Squad. The whole crew. So, is it main topic time already? It's main topic time. Yeah. Hey, topic time. Topic my my time. nose is so stuffed up. I I can't yell. So thank you, Chrissy, for covering. Oh, me. that's why you're not yelling. Yes. You're just like I'm oh, like yes. barely <laughs> breathing. <laughs> Oh, news and notes. This is okay. what happens when you run a table saw in my house like 24 hours a day. I get all stuffed up. Uh, yeah, main topic time. Uh, you know what? It's winter time. Or, but mental is it winter out there? Uh, the, uh, when, 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 um, I, okay, I, I hear the word you're using. I, I, uh, yeah, I got nothing. The season when it's not 100 degrees out. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. can you actually you still go get in your pool? Dying immediately. I, I actually can still get into my pool during the day. <laughs> in the mornings, it's a little chilly, uh, uh, but yeah. Well, most of us, no matter whether you have winter in your area or not, there is a, a brief period between the end of the season and the beginning of the season. And you're probably pretty close to that if you're not there yet. Uh, I think Lemons has a couple, AR just finished, you know, so there is a little break in the season. So that's what we're talking about, the break in the season. It is time to assess make a list and maybe get some work done and we're going to talk about the assessment phase tonight so uh you know sometimes you want to look ahead and really know about what your car needs uh tonight we're just mostly talking about the car we're gonna talk about some maybe some other things that are yeah. close to the car but uh we're gonna have some maybe future episodes on assessing the team assessing the things that surround the car some of the other things but tonight we're talking about the race car mental this goes way back to the days of the TR. 
And you remember oh, yeah. that one wheel bearing that went out for like a season and a half. And every yeah. time the car would show up, the wheel would just be a little be bit, a little bit worse, a little farther bit out. worse. And at the end of every race, the whole TR team would go, yeah, somebody needs to do something about that. Yeah, you're right, fix you're that wheel bearing. Right. Next race. Nah. Same. Same. <laughs> Since we're talking about the TR, so, let's talk about so another. We're going to assess, but make a plan. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to talk about another too. error you know of assessment what? with the TR. Remember that time when they like, like they did a whole season, and every time they did a season, like the brakes didn't work, and like every time they just kept like not finishing the race because like the axle would fall apart, the suspension would fall apart. So over the winter, they added a supercharger. <laughs> yep. I, I wasn't the yes, right way. That was the right thing to do. That's okay. Correct. Well, this is the time to fix it though, because none of us can leave the house now for a while. Fact. Really, and it's cold. And thanks, COVID. you can't just, you can't survive the winter on alcoholism alone. You've got to have something else to do. So sure. Yeah. Hey, assess your car. Let let me let me steal some Chrissy's thunder. No, I'm not interrupting her. It's actually my color, but we wanted to take it first. The very first question, Chrissy, you should always ask. <clears throat> Do you have any snacks? No. Is it safe? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> is it safe? Is it safe is the number one thing that you should be doing because there is no other job you should be doing first other than is it safe? If the answer is anything but hell yes, that's what you do first. All right. Don't worry about making it faster, making it better, making it last longer if it's not safe. Did you crash over the year? Are you getting rusty? Is there the suspension falling off? Is it even bothering? Is it even worth bothering continuing to flog this dog or is it time to move on? Okay. Uh, we have had this discussion. The few times the now. Wag, the few times now. The Wago van was getting really rusty in critical suspension the, attachment points the suspension attachment points after we had welded them several times were getting harder and harder to put back together we were running out of some critical stuff now the cage never was a problem the seats were never a problem but this is what i'm talking about when i say is all the safety stuff up to snuff is the car itself going to survive or are you going to survive in the car if something bad happens that is the first critical question to ask and i think a good way to answer it you touched on it right there is is some of the more obscure parts um completely different car not rusting away but uh, jerry ringles thunderbird that i still love to this day he had sorted the engine he had sorted the transmission the suspension was actually for a thunderbird pretty competent but weird stuff was breaking weird stuff that they couldn't even get from O'Reilly's anymore. And he'd gone to the junkyard and uh, idler pulley bolts for the, you know, the engine. And he pulled everyone he gets could get his hands on and he was running out of this stuff. And it was, he was looking down a, a, a another season of frustration with oddball parts that were going to fail and in an unpredictable manner. Yeah. Okay. I feel like some of the next part, we might've already a little bit to talk about, but maybe we can get onto it more. So we're trying to figure out what is broken. So what's uh, something hella broken, fix it to replace the whole thing, start over again with a different something rather that might be easier to find. Uh, what are you trying to find that you are ending, usually end up fixing at or replacing at the track? You can do that now. Wheel bear, wheel bearings, ball joints, brake pads, etc. cetera. Uh, beyond just replacing wear items, bigger changes you can make to avoid that issue in the future. Kind of what we were talking about before. Um, it's better to do this stuff at home than the track. And what I was getting at when we were talking about replace the whole thing. At some point, if you say I'm looking for a older Honda, something rather, can you replace the whole section with Acura stuff. Like, I feel like we've done that a couple of times with what can you, you know, what is more readily available it might be a little oh, bit like, harder to do at home, but replace it all. So then you can find the parts like better. back dating and for dating. Like if you have a 1990, right. whatever Honda, can you replace it with a 2000s Honda bit? That's what oh, I'm yeah, getting like at. Our knuckles are integral ones because the civic ones, the hubs would break. Our rear trailing arms are now later Integra pieces because the earlier Integra pieces are non, no longer in existence. We're also running out of Integra hubs now, so we'd have to do something else if we kept the car. 
and, and depending on the car, Chris, he makes a great point about um, maybe you don't need the most aggressive part. You need the less aggressive part because that one's readily available, you know? And I think about doing all this stuff over the winter, it's a little easier. To, it's a lot easier to do it over now. Uh, go to the junkyard like tomorrow, especially in the East Coast, because it's very cold here. Um, get it now. Do it over the winter and have it ready. And then you can have your spares ready for when you start racing again. Yes. I'd like to point out, I just uh, popped off to go get a drink. And my very cold natured wife um, actually has both patio doors open. So that's, I think that's what winter is here in Vegas. Well, that sounds Great. lovely. It's like 30. To, oh, actually, it's I think it's it's blow freezing because I had it's to gonna move be 22 my, tonight. I had to move my pepper plants anyway. Um, OK, so my uh, uh, smaller safety things, too. So we're talking about belts worn uh, or are they expiring next year? Seats is your seat loose. Huh, that's funny. Um, but now it always sucks to put your hands down in the bottom of the seat to try to fix all of that stuff. So now's the time to do it. Um, Absolutely. Or just check yeah. it. Like, why is it least like, all year? It could have been like, well, the seat kind of wiggles a little bit. You know, it's not too bad. And then you open it up. You see, oh, look at that cracked weld down there. Yep. It's oh, yeah. Let's go back to the TR. Hey, the seat's starting to feel a little loose. Oh, that's because the car's splitting. It's because the, yeah, <laughs> the body tub is no longer <laughs> it's, together. It's separating. In fact, the seat's the only thing holding the car together. Yeah. All right. How about uh, every time you have to actually just do a hurdle over your straight door bars, go find a friend who has a welder mm. and a bender, and then they may be able to help you because uh, now's the time to do it. And I know the Cressida guys this is what I'm talking about are going to be so excited to be able to get in and out of that car so much easier. Well, they already are. And even as much as Aaron kind of like, well, I like the straight one. I rest my arm on it. After one session, he's like, you know, actually, that's, that's pretty nice to have that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. Yep. He, and once it's done, he I, actually yeah, said, care. think about all the cheeseburgers I could eat now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. care what car it is. If you have straight door bars, uh, from a safety perspective, get rid of them. From a comfort perspective, oh, for God's sakes, just getting in and out of anything with curved door bars is so much easier. So much. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and lastly, give every nut, bolt, fastener, uh, string, everything that you can find, make sure it's tight. And uh, and just then you won't have to deal with, you know, um, losing a, 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 um, a bolt out of your seat belt is what I'm trying to get at. You know, fix things. Like that. <laughs> when is when has that ever happened? I don't know, but learn from our mistakes. Or yes, yes. learn from our mistakes. Fix learn it. Learn from our mistakes. Absolutely. That's, no. yeah. that's the alternate name of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Put a wrench in everything because you never know what's going to be surprise you for being loose. Like, well, that's never been loose before. <laughs> <laughs> yep, like that. Right. And and and. That it's a joke, but it's not really a joke. You know, the, the nature of how this season played out for every series, not just lemons or any of that kind of stuff is there was no racing, no racing, and then all of the racing. So a lot of these cars had a much harder schedule than they would have had in a conventional year. That's an excellent point. There's some bolts that are loose that you don't expect to be loose. It's not just the nut behind the wheel. So now think about what other what's what's questionable on your car any car that's been racing a little while there's probably something that's just not quite right but it's good enough like like is your kill switch getting a little dodgy like you know you had to turn it a couple of times to make it work uh, <laughs> does the cam lock on your belt kind of stick open and always bother you because when you go to put it back together the first guy put it back together why don't it work oh it's gonna have to click the thing yeah, back there. right yeah, exactly like, ah there it goes Right. Both, both of issues I dealt with this weekend, by the way. Yes. Yeah. It's things like that. Like there's definitely some things that are good enough or have, have been the subject of field expedient repairs over the years that were, were <laughs> enough to get you through that weekend. But it's not good. Like, yeah. you know, per, like temporary becomes permanent only when it doesn't, when it, when it, when it works. Well, you know what, yep. maybe this is the time to fix it the better way and you'll yeah. be happier mental the infamous red green coat is a temporary repair unless of course it works yeah, exactly exactly so you know, also think about what have you always wanted to change every car has something that just bothers the builders or the racers and the drivers of that car like you know, jeff you, you you you're so excited what is it what is it the dead pedal the Remember how pedal. many times yes. I complained about the dead pedal? I sure not do. Just, yep. Not just Jeff. Yep. So the, the, that, the, that, seat, the, the seat angle. 
Yep, an the angle. scene angle that hits you in the back of the head. Yep. Uh, like a cut, like a, a, a haphazard or crappy like gauge or switch panel, like something that was okay when you first made it, and now you've added four more switches and six more gauges, and it's just, it's everywhere. And if you yes. want to know what to do there, go listen to our Hamza episode, and yeah. you'll know exactly what to do for that. Um, is, do you I'll, ever... I'll lick it. Yeah. yeah. Right there. <laughs> Good. In the, in the dooley do. Got it. Not the dooley no, 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 no. Dooley do's here. Oh, okay. This is, up up this in is the link there. The Got linky it. link. All right. Uh, you A lot of cars have like a ri wiring rat's nest that you need to all just shove that up there and zip tie it, right? Yeah. What does this Maybe wire even do? I don't know. Put some tape on it. We're done. Move. Right. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Maybe this is a good time to, to carefully remove some of that stuff to, to declutter the car. Or if you ever want to really get a nightmare, go look at the dash of the original Race Bar 7 Series. Oh. You will. They had dig. to have done that on purpose. Like that had to be like, let's spread this stuff out as far as we can. Like just spread that wiring harness also seven series yeah that's true uh so you know, may, maybe it can be something simple like your exhaust was it's like a crimp bend crappy exhaust and it's not really good it's occasionally it comes apart you know or a loud muffler even this is the time to fix it even something as simple as you don't have a real clock that works like we just have a a 399 target flavor flave kitchen clock that is held on with packing tape that works which, great it works great until it doesn't because they don't hit stand up to the vibrations very well. Like we love the little, the little digital 499 digital ones yeah, and stick yeah. them on with some, the Velcro you use for easy passes works great. And the, the, the problem with those flavor flav clocks is they're usually so far out of your field of vision, you know, maybe, maybe sit down and actually think that one through. Uh, and then you, there's, there's more than an average chance that your car has probably been tapped a few times. So even if you don't think you've got a crimped exhaust, if you've been bumped, you you've got a crimped exhaust. Yeah, yeah. Or just I, might have been a, a crimp bend one that was just welded together with whatever crap they had around. <laughs> Who knows? Well, and I think yes. this is this is a the exhaust is probably the place where the field exper expedient repair happened, and you never did anything about it. Like, sure. oh, that's well, when leaking. When the your a hole friend done. bumps you when you're sitting in in the grid, <laughs> and uh, bends your exhaust, you gotta you know you gotta fix it somehow. So yes, true. Yep. Great. All right. I think if you're there, now's the time to talk about adding reliability. Uh, cooling is, uh, you can always add more cooling. You can always add a diff cooler, a trans cooler, a bigger cooler. You can always duck those brakes a little better. Cool, whatever it is, you know, there's, there's weak or so, so cooling a number two leaky stuff. There's all every there's not a such thing as a race car that doesn't leak. Everybody's got that little seal or that little gasket that's going to be problematic sooner or later. Maybe everybody who drives your car in the paddock has blown that thermostat housing. Go ahead and put a fresh one in. This is where we're fixing things that aren't broken. Okay. Add some more cooling, fix all those gaskets. So a little wonky fix all those leaks your car will last longer make it more reliable yeah more reliable more, more reliable more laps more better that's right mental did you have something that you didn't expect to fail that failed mid-season in the middle of a race and it cost you a little bit replace that part now oh <laughs> yeah yeah go ahead so, Monty, you're next all right so now you've gotten through all that it looked honestly this is some rock solid advice Maybe it's time for you to think about going faster. No, maybe you're a, no, I don't maybe think you're a, maybe time. you're the number 76 Maxima. And despite your best efforts at high plains raceway, where the car got tacked really hard, you have now crushed B class and finished third overall. So you are now comfortably in a, and you will never see B again, or maybe you're, you've had fun with the art cars and you're looking to go in there and kind of start bumping it up a little bit. So are there any cheap mods that you haven't done? There were two Miatas this weekend at Houston that have not done the cooling and the oiling mod for the number four cylinder. Do yeah. you like replacing yeah. motors? That's Maybe you should go ahead and work on that now. That's a 30 second internet search and it costs you nothing. 
Um, how about those regular eBay searches? You can have eBay alert you when certain things come available. Are there some used performance parts that might help? And this is after everything else though. So don't, don't start go like, you know, the, the Mustang route of, Oh yeah, we make 700 horsepower. Uh, what are your brakes? Ah, uh, they're stock, you know, but you, 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 You've already taken care of everything above this. So you've done all that and you're thinking about going faster. Don't forget each of the message, uh, the message boards and Facebook groups of every race series out there. And it's okay to cross pollinate if you're looking for specific parts. Uh, teams that are upgrading or they're parting out, say like a car that's soft on all four corners and they're getting ready, you know, rid of their stuff. They might be looking to sell that. And if you're not even really sure what modification is worthwhile, start asking questions, reach out. There's someone who's done it or is that the experience with it? And they're going to be happy to share it with you. Maybe you're the team that has no interest in going faster. You have found your sweet spot and you love doing it. Everything that Jeff, Chris and Chrissy just talked about, why not make the car a little bit more comfortable? Upgrade that Kirky seat with no padding to something a little bit better contoured. Cool shirts. Cool once, shirts. Once you Hell run a yeah. cool shirt, you that's are in safety. Never that's in safety. Back. Yeah. I'm telling you. Uh, that, and, that's the piece of advice that all of us skipped because all of it, <laughs> we all thought you already did it. All right. That's like, yeah. did you look both ways across the street? Because you should have learned that in kindergarten. Cool shirts cool shirts. Uh, if you're running a series that runs at night, there's been some great advice about putting LED lighting on the roof of your car to make uh, snapping those lock, those sticky cam lock belts and easier. Just things that is going to make your teammates happier. Look into that. And we're going to wrap it up with just basic maintenance. Every fluid you have in that car should come out and new fluid should go in. And uh, for anyone that doesn't live in Las Vegas, time to pull that pure water out and replace it with some antifreeze before you store it for the winter. Otherwise you are looking to break some very expensive parts, but get that oil. All right. The one that no one thinks about change out your brake fluid, change it out. Now uh, your transmission dip, all your filters, and then wash the car. John Wait, Artman. What, what is huh? that? What? See this <laughs> man's face. What is that? I don't know how to do why? that. Why you do yeah. that? <laughs> why you do that? Uh, you I only wash a it right before you spray vomit. I have a really, really nice Mercedes given to me or sold to me by a pair of wonderful friends who took great care of it, kept it in a garage. And I still have a few bits and pieces that are stuck together with just the very finest bits of grit and added with some desert dust that gets in there. And if you, you th those are the kind of things that are going to creep into all areas of your car. So go through and give it a good scrub down before it goes into its winter sleepy place. Oh, and I'm sorry. And finally, if you've got running a fuel cell, which you shouldn't because you're stupid. But if you're making that fuel cell modification or you've already done that, inspect or really replace that fuel cell phone. Jeff. Uh, I just want to go back to when you talked about going faster, like deciding what parts are out there and stuff. Uh, going faster includes stopping better and turning harder. Uh, it doesn't always most include of it. like going powerful. But I'm going to tell you another trick because Mental mentioned watching like the AER boards, even if you're not in AER, uh, the Facebook marketplace groups for your mark, you know, even if your mark is filled with hella dumped, you know, slanty wheeled, you know, flat H2O builds, fast attending, H2O fast attending noobs. Sometimes they're going to drop a hot racing part because they don't know what it is. Yeah. And I'm going to say that Dr. K just texted me that he's picking up our hella sweet shock absorbers tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> oh, 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 that might be a hint. Oh, oh, All right. my. But this oh, my. Is like, yeah. Regardless uh, of your series, and most of us run more than one series um regardless of your chosen series racers are racers and it's a supportive community and sure we've got our you know penis heads but by and large folks will help you out hey man i need this for my race car all right man i'll cut you a deal bring me a case of beer and you can have it for this price those deals i'm getting, a, I'm getting a great deal on a new rear sway bar for a civic that we don't even own yet that it was on the <laughs> jerry from a, from a guy there's like yeah i just want to pass it along like it was good for me just want to give somebody a deal and help their out for their builds it's like sweet and when you pull yeah. those old parts off of your car do the same thing build that karma mm -hmm. you need it hell yeah absolutely yeah, speaking of another thing you might want to do 
this is totally maybe next week's show. Clear out of the garage all the parts you don't need by passing <laughs> them along. Put them up. Yeah, find your favorite forum. Put up a garage cleaning for sale post. You know, for beer money for a lot of stuff. Even like don't care. Just want to, don't want to throw it away. And if stuff that you can't even give away, that's when you have a scrap pile again. Yep. Or you just find I, someone running the same car as you and give it to them. Yeah. Here's here's the box of stuff I don't need. You're taking it. Yeah. Okay. We might Whatever. have one of those. Do you like it or not? The three or four. Uh, yeah. Well, one see. person that takes our stuff is what oh. I was going to say. Um, so as as Mental was talking, I was thinking that there's a lot of these things, like we said, how how great cool shirts are. Uh, Christmas is coming. Uh, I'm sure that everybody, uh, there's plenty of families that don't. Uh, we'll have a Christmas show. We'll have a pre-Christmas show. Uh, there's a lot of families that may be uh, hurting a little bit. Some of the stuff is expensive, but maybe you just want one part for this stuff for Christmas. So if we Like say a hose cool ease. Yeah, come on <laughs> sure right <laughs> yes i was thinking of like i was like what about the hose the hose on the corner what are you talking about <laughs> yes i think that's a fairly inexpensive An affordable gift i'm trying to think gifts for yes. everyone every I was, budget i was thinking Name that it. you go for the whole set and you figure out what you need for a cool shirt shirt box sh the shirt and that's your and that's your present you just get everybody to give you all one one section of something is what i was getting at so We'll talk more about Christmas. I, I sense a future show category. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All December. of our favorite Christmas oh, a things. New one. A new December one. ninth. December ninth. Sh shopping tips. <laughs> Maybe we could do a shopping tips show. Call Fair. your best friend. All righty then. Anyone have anything else for the good of the order? On no. main topic? No, I think we're good. Awesome. It is that time of the day. Our favorite time of the day. When Chrissy gives us just, just the, the tip. Tip. Oh, thank you. Tip. Thank you for the fanfare. Tip. I appreciate it. My first introduction was was lame. Okay. Uh, as you know, I work in safety and much of my job has something to do with watching many 12 second fairly grainy videos. Oh, so TikTok. Uh, yeah, just kind of like that. Less butt shaking. <laughs> and a lot more and, accidents. And dogs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and no. Not, not oh, as fun. no. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Oh, no, no. That's the song that they play right before somebody trips. Go on. Okay. Oh. I, I might need that. Anyway, uh, these grainy videos are going to soon be uh, top notch cameras with the AI. Uh, and they're going to be able to pick up and yell at you when you pick up your phone or start smoking, uh, amongst other things. There's all kinds of things. It's a little scary. But anyway, I hate, uh, I hate the future already. I know. I know. Just don't get me started. But uh, it's going to be great because, it's, yeah, anyway. Uh, one of the bad trends that we're seeing is reminded me of my last ticket that I've received. Uh, it was a few years ago, uh, but it's, we're going to talk about stop signs and Whoa. when you don't actually stop for said stop signs. That was my last ticket. I went through three stop signs and the cop pulled me over and Did said, you really? I didn't go. I didn't stop. I, I went through three stop signs and like uh, you I didn't stop them. at all. You, yeah. you, you no, just I, didn't I, go I, all the way down. I rolled through, rolled through them, and two of which were, they were clear. You could see it was like a, a three-way stop, so I could see straight. There's nobody over there. I could go right through it, um, and then I got a ticket. I think he was pretty nice to me, but I still got the ticket. Anyway, that's great video. This is great audio. There's nothing, nothing nothing's, there. nothing's working, Jeff. Anyway, yeah. next I, I, time. I feel like the cop was like, all right, I'm going to let her get away with that one. Okay, that's two. If she does, okay, that's three stop signs. I'm pulling her over. And uh -huh. that's what ha that's exactly what happened. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, okay. So next time you come to a stop sign, do you really stop? Like full stop? And that's, do you stop before you start moving again? I, I'm just as, as, uh, I'm as guilty. Uh, and, especially and, but, if you're driving the clutch car. Sure. You and might not get and all the way down. No, and my and pulling into our street, there's a whole bunch of stops coming in and out because you have to go through a couple to uh are you okay, Chris? He's chasing the cat. Oh uh, no, <laughs> that's right here. Oh there <laughs> that is right there. <laughs> we're, ha we're having a cute competition. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is bad podcasting. So we're talking about stop signs. Podcasting. Did you did you really stop? And then when you when you stopped, did you actually, or you pretend to stop, did you actually look around? And did you look, but did you see it? Did you see things, or did you just, like, pretend to look around and just keep driving through? 
Next time you drive, and then I would like you to remind your family as well, stop signs are added for places for a reason, probably because something might have happened there or something they something could happen there and people want to make sure that doesn't happen there. So watch for other cars, but more importantly, watch for pedestrians. So uh, some of them may not have seen you. Uh, yep. And mental, you can just add that at the end. Uh, some of them may not seen you. They might be distracted. They might not just be staring flat at their phone, but they also might have been looking at their dog or looking somewhere else and night might not have seen you. So uh, let's watch for pedestrians at the most. Go ahead, mental. And, and as a motorcyclist, I am, I fully endorse this. Just the tip. Because you learn very quickly to see people as they approach stop signs that like, no, nope, they don't see me. Don't see me at all. Yep. Same nope. happens with people. So that's my just the tip. I, I am s- surprised uh, to my- hear you freely admit that you rolled through a stop sign. I am a stopper and a looker and an untruster. So I'm like, I, and you know me, I am not a safe driver. I am a fool <laughs> behind the wheel. Uh, I, no I'm stop, tech, you stop. <laughs> like, but man, I, maybe it's just because I'm in Jersey and there's some aggro people out there and they're like, I will hit you. Four way stop bull, you know? Uh, so yeah. So yeah, I, I think this is a real one. Do it. Yeah. It is cool. a real one. It's a real one, yeah. I've, not that they're not all real, Chrissy. I just didn't mean to analyze all the other safety. <laughs> this tips, isn't a fake right? safety tip, no. right? <laughs> not like that. So time Chrissy, you said, if Chrissy's given it, it's a real safety tip. If the other three of us, <laughs> not like that other time where you're like, need to know where the electricity's on, stab it with us scissors. <laughs> Sorry, pick your favorite <laughs> metal implement. Did, which show was that one on? Or or open the back door, see if it shocks you. You know. <laughs> no, your <laughs> son. Not sure, if you're out of gas, use a lighter. No. <laughs> no. Oh, this is terrible. Why, why doesn't do this that. Roman candle fire? Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> These are not right safety down tips. Down the f- center to see what we finish the safety the tip candle. before. This is not the safety tip. Anyway, oh, okay. that was awesome. So are, we, I, do, go ahead. are we doing another show? What yes, actually. It's, uh, a, it's, it's our a segue. Angle. Oh, oh, segue. Yes. segue. I love it's riding those little, <laughs> those little electric bikes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. What's your degree in? <laughs> I don't know at this point. It's our, it's our <laughs> annual Thanksgiving show, and this is generally a chance to reflect on the past year, and holy effing crap. This year, there is a lot to reflect on, but we, the four of us are going to talk about our experiences that racing and this show has given us this year and what we are most grateful for and genuinely would love to hear the same from you. What has the season of the Rona, uh, your iRacing experience, which I feel has exploded this year, the races you did manage to make it to, or the races that you missed, what's, what's made, what is reconfigured your gratitude on that one so uh get a hold of us on our social media talk to us about it put it down in the doodly do get a hold of us and we'll uh we'll talk about that on the next show awesome what are you thankful for chris chrissy mental that's next did week. we do that's anything? next week i'm not no no, no. i know that i know that i'm just saying we have to really think <laughs> did we like have anything that we like really did special this year Nothing that we're thankful. For. I don't know. We'll, right, we'll so have to. We'll, we got a week to think about it. So I want just all to really. Yeah, or, think. or you guys shut up and it'll just be weepy mental episode. I don't care. I'm I'm very grateful. So <laughs> my, my my volume is not up. Hold on a second. The worst to... show ever. There we go. Mental slightly not... sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my or son. From making ASMR. At the, right? at the end. At the end of the beard. at the end of the episode, just like Oprah, everyone gets a kidney. There you go. Yeah, well, that's that, only after enough tequila. That was uh, seventh grade math today. It's kind of weepy. Um, thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe or push the button. It's going to be right there if you're watching on the YouTube. Uh, if you, whatever you do, wherever you watch us, Wherever you listen to us, go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. Or put it in the doodly-doo. 
right down there. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers. Email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com. Text us, 484-243-0455. Please be aware that mental is on that time zone on the left side of the country. So he That one like actually doesn't ding, so I'm okay. Oh, okay. So. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at everyone.racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless your music is running out, then just keep the wheels down. <laughs>